episode six thank you guys so much for listening to our first five episodes we are so excited that this is our sixth i mean i can't believe we made it already yeah it's been fun <laughs> it's been extremely fun we hope you enjoyed episode five and you watched it on either youtube or listened on itunes be sure to subscribe if you have not so in episode five we kind of talked about we strayed away from our path a little bit yeah we talked about some of our other interests. That episode was all about a paranormal, our paranormal experiences, ghosts, and Ouija boards. Yeah. And uh, I feel like, you know, maybe we stirred something up because right before we filmed this, <laughs> uh, we were sitting here with our mics on, we're doing our testing, we're listening for ambient noise in the room, and we hear, <laughs> the hell, what the fuck is that? And I don't know what happened. We just reset everything, we unplugged everything, plugged it back in, and... I don't know what that was. But. I don't know. It's pretty weird, but, you know, things happen. Yeah. Well, this episode, we're getting right back into our nonsense. Oh, yeah. We have uh, some of the more uh, terrible stories on this one. More terrible. One of them is pretty bad. Really? Both of them. One of them is really disgusting. <laughs> Both of them are. Both of them are. Actually, you're right. Um, and so, yeah, we can't wait to share these stories with you guys. Hope you cringe as much as I did when I first heard that. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I remember I told you the story and then I showed you, which I highly recommend uh, watching this one on YouTube. There's there pictures accompanying so with it pictures. and they're bad. They're really bad. There's so many pictures to go with this episode, but we can't wait to share them with you guys. So I mean, let's get right into it. Some of your other friends from high school, right? Yeah, of course, two buddies from uh, high school, uh, Casey and Zeke. And uh, they were best friends in high school. And uh, we were all friends with them, and they were good guys. And we got into a whole bunch of trouble and partied a whole bunch. Well, as soon as everyone graduated from high school, Casey and Zeke got an apartment together. And it turned into, I mean, pretty much the main party spot. Yeah. Parties. I mean, we're in college times, 18, 19, 20, 21. Right. I mean, drinking every single night, getting super fucked up. Their then apartment they're... was terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> it was gross in there. But... You know, just a whole bunch of parties. Mm -hmm. And these guys, as great of friends as they are, they would always fuck with each other. And of course, I'm there and some of my other good friends are there, so we are always egging them on. Enabler. And <laughs> I participated sometimes. So um, it got pretty it got pretty intense over there. But the big thing that kicked it off was uh, Zeke. So Zeke was a real fun guy, and he could drink a whole bunch. But when he got really, really fucked up, which was, I mean, almost every other day. All the time. <laughs> he had a terrible habit of turning into a toddler. And I mean, he pissed his pants. Oh my goodness. I've been so there. So many times. I've been there. You there pissed are... your pants drunk before? No, not me. Oh. I was saying I've experienced I other done people that, yeah. doing it. There was this, uh, this one time in college, actually. It was this frat and they had just gotten new members. So like a new rush class. So they were partying a whole bunch. We were all getting to know them, the people who were like good friends with the house. And there was this one guy who was passed out in a room that we were all still hanging out and partying in. And we were like, eh, he's fine. Yeah, like, yeah, he's whatever. He's in the corner. Out. Exactly. And out of nowhere, he gets up and walks behind this, the bar in the room. And it just so happened um, he walked out and it was the bar. And right in front of it was the door. Mm -hmm. And he, I guess, thought he was walking out of the door, but instead he walked behind the bar and where my jacket, keys, some of my personal items were, and he pulled down his pants and just started peeing. And I was like, you motherfucker. You pissed on all your stuff? <laughs> he pissed on my white North Face jacket. That's disgusting. And I was so upset, and all the guys were like, I'm so sorry. I was like... I don't care. Just go wash my jacket multiple times. No, go buy me a new jacket. And I was jacket. like, honestly, bleach it while you're at it. It needs to be bleached. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, <laughs> so, so gross. But it's a thing. People oh, do definitely. that, unfortunately. I've, I've known many people to do it. But um, unlike the majority, Zeke 
did this like a lot. Like every time? Uh, weekly. Oh my God. Weekly. No, I've never met somebody like that. Yeah, he'd get fucked up and do that. So we already know uh, Zeke goes hard. He parties hard and yeah. he gets fucked up, passes out in random places and pisses himself, whatever. So we were playing beer pong at their house like every single day. <laughs> and, you know, Zeke gets fucked up and he goes and passes out like he always does. So Did we're he have having his shoes fun. on? <laughs> that, uh, uh, that's my house rule. If you're in someone else's house, and especially his roommate, Casey, is down oh, for to do shit to him, yeah. then it's on. I mean, that's he's the only one that's going to say no and we're going to listen to. But exactly. if his own roommate's like, fuck yeah, let's fuck with Zeke. <laughs> okay. So Zeke passes out, and we come up with a really funny idea. So the table we were playing beer pong on was a typical like glass top, like if you're watching at home like this. Um, dining room table but it was a rectangle and it, so it has the metal the metal frame mm -hmm. and then just a big piece of glass on top of it right so he passes out and we come up with this idea and what we do is we take two of the chairs and we sit them side by side with like a foot or two probably like a foot foot and a half gap in between them we go and pick up Zeke's fucking drunk passed out ass <laughs> and we go and lay him on the chairs then what we do is we put the metal frame on top of him okay. over him yeah so he's just sitting laying on chairs and there's a frame over him well then we went and bought a whole bunch of saran wrap real quick mm -hmm. at the gas station and the gap in between them we saran wrapped him to the frame okay and then we moved the chairs out a little bit saran wrapped <laughs> more until we pulled the chairs out and he's literally hanging there like like he's on a like dexter like oh, on a serial killer's it. table but underneath the frame yeah facing the floor okay and then we put the glass top on top of it and then so we, it's like a normal table now. Yeah. And then we get all the beer pong and keep playing. set it up. And then we start playing beer pong while Zeke is hanging there yeah. underneath us on the glass table. And you can see him. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. I mean, we're taking pictures. It's a huge, it's hilarious. Like, everyone wants their turn. And we're like, fuck it. Let's just play real quick. No, that so sounds more people, hilarious. Yeah. So, you know, we post pictures. And then people are like, wait, there's a fucking dude strapped to that table. <laughs> That's his fucking place. <laughs> so it was really funny. We were dying hysterically. <laughs> And Zeke's strapped there for whatever, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And out of nowhere, it's, you know, if you have a pet, uh, I'm sure you recognize this noise. Or a kid, probably. May, I don't know. Maybe kids. I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> but I would sound, hope not. <laughs> the sound of peeing on a carpet. Oh, yeah. You can hear it. You hear it. It puddles in and makes a noise. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what the fuck? Is, you know, you jump up real quick. Oh, yeah. Well, we heard that noise. And we looked down. And Zeke, you know, lo and behold to his name to his reputation started peeing but he's hanging strapped to the table so upside is it down just like dripping well, through the saran wrap? I, I am at first it pulled and probably spread everywhere until it found like a leak a spot in oh, between the saran wrap and then it just started pouring down and he's peeing a lot yeah he's probably so full of beer and like yeah and he had passed out so oh at that point you know he'd he been had holding a, it the whole yeah. time it's still processing through his body so he's peeing and peeing and peeing and we saran wrapped the shit out of him so we couldn't just like cut him off real quick it wasn't that easy we oh, saran wrapped him oh my god so we're like what the fuck what the fuck and someone runs to the kitchen and grabs like a big pot <laughs> and just sticks it underneath him and just interrupts the stream of like <laughs> this puddle that's now building in the carpet yeah and he eventually finishes they dump it out and i don't even i don't think we cut, I, we did cut him down after that and then we told him the next day, and he was super fucking pissed. Oh, my God. He's the one that passed out. Tell him to relax. Also, he's the one that pisses his pants. So. Yeah. He, yeah his, every time he would bring a girl home and, like, go and hook up, we're like, that bed is so gross. And he peed on multiple girls. <gasps> like, passed out. And then in the morning, they woke up, and it was all wet. That's so bad. It was super fucking One funny. of my friends, actually, in the frat that I was just talking about, did that to his girlfriend at the time. Yeah did that to her yeah well zeke did that to uh, like a few for sure oh my lanta that is absolutely disgusting that apartment with them two there was ridiculous the parties the 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 pranks i mean what i'm about to tell you is pretty fucking bad pretty bad um i honestly i when he told me this like i said i've heard a lot of his stories from the past whenever they happened or once i got older to like understand and started partying myself then that's when all these stories started flooding in. Um, but this one was a, a recent one that you told me. 
And you had never heard this one before? Never. And I don't know why I had never seen the pictures either. Yeah. And I was absolutely speechless because I cannot imagine this happening to me or doing this to somebody else either. It was really bad. Okay. So, so I mean, it's funny that we're about to talk uh, about such a creature. Kalua was just in a shot, our uh, Italian Mastiff. Yep. Mimosa is under my feet at the moment. Uh, just so happens to be her birthday. Oh, yeah. It's, she's actually one today, she right? She is one year one old. Year, little nugget. Little nug. She's my cute. little baby. So uh, th this story has a dog in it, too. Oh, God. <laughs> so the uh, this is at that same apartment the first year after high school. Okay. Right? Zeke and Casey They're were there. They're still roommates. They're still roommates. And it was uh, Zeke's, I, I want to say if it was the first year, it must have been his 19th birthday. Mm -hmm. And we threw a huge fucking party. Everyone gets fucked up. It's a great night. Well, the thing about it is um, Zeke had uh, asked Casey if he could get a dog. And he told him, yeah, sure, man. As long as you fucking take care of it, train it. I love dogs. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So he went to the Humane Society and he got a puppy. That's like every college kid's dream is for somebody to have a dog. Oh, yeah. Like, it's unreal. You're away from home usually. And then when somebody gets a dog, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. So it's ideal situation. Plus a lot of bonding because, to be honest, I mean, <laughs> you're not... I mean, yes, you go to classes, but you're home a lot. Oh, absolutely. So, um, well, yeah. So he gave him the green light, and uh, Zeke went and got a puppy from the Humane Society. He named him Charlie. He was a little... Uh, I mean, he was a medium-sized dog. He was definitely mixed with, like, Pitbull mm -hmm. and um, Rottweiler. He had the markings. Oh, okay. You know, like the brown eyebrows and stuff. Yeah. So he was a cute dog. But uh, <laughs> Zeke just partied way too much, and he, he didn't fucking train that dog early. Aww. So it had, like, a whole bunch of accidents in the house, yeah. and Casey would always get super fucking mad because it wasn't the dog's fault. It no, was because it's Zeke Zeke's was being fault. a drunk ass and not paying attention or taking the dog out. Exactly. So anyways, it's his 19th birthday. We throw a, a big fucking party at their apartment, and everyone's getting fucked up. Well, it gets to that point in the night where Zeke is obliterated drunk. Oh, my he God. He goes and passes out. Yeah. Okay, cool. Whatever. Well, um... Why didn't he, like, you know, take his dog in his room, you know? Uh, Charlie was a party dog. He loved parties. Oh he was very God. friendly with everyone. He was... Yeah. Ever, and then Casey, I mean, <laughs> no matter what I'm about to say after this, I mean, he took care of that dog, too, for sure. Okay. He had his back. He was a great... They're both great dog owners. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> besides that little, you know, indiscrepancy of not training him because he's mm -hmm. drunk all the time, partying. Um, but that was just at the beginning. He was a really good dog after that. Very well behaved and trained. So um, he was partying. He was a party dog. He was everywhere in the apartment. Yeah. And Zeke's already passed out for the night. He's done. Okay. Okay. His birthday, but he's done. So he's de demolished. <laughs> Hammer time. <laughs> Hammied. <laughs> so he had too many handies on handies. <laughs> handies on handies. He had bottles. So he goes to his room and he locks his door. That's what he did when he would go pass out. Uh, because we had fuck with him. Like, after the saran wrap time, I think He's you like, fucking learned. I need to go lock my I lock room. my door. Yeah. <laughs> so, party goes on, and it's early in the morning, you know, whatever, four or five in the morning. And someone goes into Casey's, uh, his room to use the restroom because Zeke's was locked. Mm -hmm. Because he was sleeping for the night. And he comes out, and he's like, Casey, you're going to be fucking mad, dude. Charlie did something in your bathroom. And so Casey's like, what the fuck? So he runs into the bathroom. And he comes out and he's already yelling. So I know something's going to happen. Aww. So I like run in there after him. Charlie had gone into Casey's bathroom and took a big shit on the throw rug in front of like your toilet. Yeah. So there's like big old poop pile right there. I mean, that's easy to clean though. Uh, I mean, yeah. Get it off. Wa sanitize the shit out and wash it. Yeah. I throw it in the washing machine. True. But I mean, I, I mean, think it was four or more... five in the morning. He's obliterated drunk. This had been going on for weeks. I was going to say, of I, his puppy I feel like it was a having accidents up. in the apartment. Pee here, yeah. poop there, pee. You know, that's not fun. No, I mean, definitely it's, not. Yeah, you gotta, it's just it's a, a lot of work up. to potty train a dog, and it's commitment. One hundred percent. I know. Whenever I got mimosa, I mean, it's it's a well. You had never had a puppy before, so you did never not had understand my own puppy. The, like I always say, I love dogs, but the first year sucks. I it, mean, it, it takes a lot of time. It really does, and I mean, I've seen all of our dogs be trained through you, but having your own dog is so different, especially when you live by yourself. So I didn't get mimosa until I moved to Long Island. Yeah. 
um, and got my first job. I got her in Texas, in San Antonio, and then I flew up with her when she was eight weeks old. What well, was it a? Was she a birthday present or a graduation? My graduation present. That was my. Yeah. Like hands down, my number one graduation present. I wanted a puppy. I wanted a Shih Tzu. That was my one hundred percent. That's all. If I didn't get anything else for graduation, I wanted a puppy. That yeah. was it. So it's well, it is, <laughs> it's a lot of work, but honestly, <clears throat> to that point, I'm very glad that I didn't get her in college for that reason. Oh, yeah. Because I would feel so bad going out every night, partying, coming home fucked up. Like, you're not taking <clears> care <throat> of it. And I had a few friends who did get dogs <clears throat> in college. Oh, I'm not uh, clearing my throat on accident. What about a uh, fireball? Okay, well, I had a hamster, <laughs> but that's so different. If he didn't make it, I don't think a dog would have oh made my. it. <laughs> he, Dead hamster alert. Fireball did it. Okay, so I got a hamster in college with one of my best friends who, you know what? I'll tell a little story about her later. Okay, but yeah. But I'll tell a little story about her later. But we got a hamster, and it was her turn to take care of the hamster, and it didn't work out so well when she took care of it. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll come back to that. So anyways... <laughs> Not the greatest idea to get a uh, animal when you're in college and okay. you're just partying all the time. Time out. Did I tell you she got another hamster? No. Side note. Oh, she has another oh hamster. Is it still alive? <laughs> um, you know, I haven't asked her in a while. I, I should ask not. her. Yeah. <laughs> so, back to the story. Charlie pooped on Casey's carpet. He's fucked up and furious. Okay. Super mad. So he comes out of the room and he's like, Bobby, come to fucking Zeke's room with me right fucking now. I was like... I'm in. Whatever's about to happen, I'm fucking in. Did he have a key? Yes, because they're roommates, so they he had the key. Okay. You know, for whatever reason. Just in emergency, case, whatever, you I never mean, know. Yeah. yeah. And so we go into the room, and as soon as we get in the room, he's like, Bobby, shut the fucking door. I was like, okay. So I shut and lock it. <laughs> so no one can get in. He has the only other key. Yeah. We're in there. And he's holding this carpet that's just a pile of dog poop. I was like, okay... So then he turns and he gives me the drunkest, cockeyed <laughs> smile and grin ever. I'm fucking sick and tired of this shit. I'm going to teach him a lesson. So then... I don't like where this lesson is going. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Nobody wants this lesson. So what he proceeds to do, and I really hope you're watching on YouTube because these pictures will be up accompanied with it. First thing he does is he takes a little nug a poo. And he puts it right on his face. And he's passed out. I mean, he's gone. He cannot be woken up. Then, the next picture you'll see is the whole pile of poop on his face. He was just transferring it with a piece of paper. Oh, my God. And I'm dying laughing. I mean, I'm (laughs) dying. And I pull out my phone and I'm taking these pictures. So the next thing he does, and I thought this was, okay, holy shit. This is enough. This is insane. This is rowdy. I think he went a little too far with this one. <laughs> well, then he pries open his mouth and sticks a log in there of poop. So it looks like he's smoking a poop cigar. There's literally a, like a poop log out of his mouth and he's passed out just laying there. He has a shit cigar. A shit cigar. That uh, went shit. zero to a hundred. <laughs> yes. So fast. And then for the uh, coup de gras, he just takes that piece of paper, that piece of paper, and smashes it into his face and smears his face, smearing poo into his pores, into his skin, nose, mouth, eyes, nostrils, fucking black, covered in poo. Like, covered in poo. It looked like he, like, went bobbing for apples in shit. Like, his face is... He had, like, a mud mask on. Exactly. Oh. Mud bud, yeah. My God. It, the smell... I don't even understand. I was just about to say... The smell that permeated the room... Was I instantly started gagging and <laughs> laughing and trying not to throw up because it was horrible. And like the people outside his door can hear our expression because he's dying laughing. Yeah, I'm sure. And we're both dying laughing and gagging at the same time. And they're like, what the fuck is going on in there? And Casey's like, fuck off. This is my apartment. They're like, all right. Yeah. So- Honestly, I was just about to say when Mimosa shifts, like when she used to have a lot of accidents and stuff. The smell. It's fresh dog poo. But if you smush it. Disgusting. Like, shout out to uh, the Shitspatrick story. The Shitspatrick story. When you stepped story. in that dog, or in her poop, 
I'm sure the it smell. just smelled so it's gross. bad. It, no, oh my god. Her like mimosa shit alone, I feed her very good food yeah. too, which makes dog shit smell more. Yes. Um, but her shit smelled literally <laughs> it's like I just lit a candle in my apartment. Like it fills yeah. my entire apartment. She's a stinky butt. <laughs> so yeah, it was a uh, Pretty intense in there. Oh so my god. So we leave his room. They lock the door, how it was. Yeah. And we go and party for a little bit. And then Casey's like, all right, I'm going to bed. And I was like, Casey, bro. Lock your door. <laughs> when Zeke wakes up, well, he has a key also. Oh, yeah. When he wakes up, I know y'all are best friends. But he's going to try to beat the shit out of you. Like, be ready to wake up and fight. Yeah. And he's like, no. Nah. And I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> like, be he's ready for be a little pissed. scrap. And he's like, okay. So he took a chair and he jammed it under the doorknob to like, you know, secure it shut. Yeah. I was like, okay, bro, good fucking luck. So he goes to sleep. Well, the thing about Zeke is, remember, this was his birthday party. So he had like a really early morning birthday breakfast with his parents. Okay. So Casey wakes up. Hey, Zeke didn't try to beat the shit out of me. What's going on? He goes under the apartment. Zeke's passed out still. Oh, no. He overslept. Yeah. So he, you know, goes into his room and he, he like violently shakes him to wake him up he's like z bro bro wake the fuck up you're you're already late for that uh breakfast with uh your parents and your whole family and shit right and so he freaks out jumps out of the bed still fucked up you know <laughs> falling all over of i course. mean he's wasted still, yeah. and he's like trying to throw his life together so he can just throw clothes on and get the fuck out the door while he's doing this casey tells him z hey bro you have some shit on your face, go wash it off. But literally. He, he literally <laughs> said it like that. Yeah. So he didn't think, oh, I have feces right. on my face. He just he thought I have something. He went straight to the sink, washed off his face, put on his clothes, and was ready to go out the door. And when I tell people this, they're like, how did he not smell it? Well, he had thrown up the night before so much and smoked cigarettes. and I mean, everything probably just tasted bad and yeah. smelled bad, I assume. Not only that, I feel like whenever you're super hungover, like yeah. you wake up the next morning, you have dry mouth, like after a whole night you of drinking. Mouth? You have, <laughs> well, you have dry mouth and you can't taste anything. I mean... I would yeah. hope that you would taste well, you that, know what? but I'm he serious. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah. So he washed his face off. He goes out and he's, uh, he grabs his keys and he's about to leave the apartment and he looks at Casey. He's like, hey, thanks, man. Am I good? And he like gives him a smile with a thumbs up. And Casey says his face was clean. No poo-poos. But in between <laughs> every single one of his teeth was shit. He could see it in like all in between his teeth, you know? Oh. It was stuck in there. Did he not brush his teeth before he left the house? He said that he got ready so fast. It was like seconds. Like he probably just wash, 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 wash. You know, didn't even really brush your teeth, did yeah. like a pathetic attempt. Or at even like, if he like used mouthwash, that wouldn't get it all out. Yeah, like he nothing. did not properly <laughs> brush his teeth. <laughs> Threw on clothes and ran out the door. So he takes off. Did and, he drive? <laughs> yeah, he drove. So he takes off and he oh goes to God. breakfast. Well, <laughs> Casey calls me and tells me that he doesn't even know. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, all right, dude, that's fucking insane. I'm going to post those pictures online to MySpace. Oh, <laughs> this my is MySpace God. days. Or maybe it was Facebook, but... One of the two. Yeah. And he's like, okay, bro, go for it. So I hang up, post the pictures, chilling at home, and like, so fast, alerts are going off. Like, comment, like, comment. Oh. All everybody that knew us from high school and all our college friends yeah. were blowing up that album that I'd created. I posted every single picture. Oh, my every God. Every single picture. There's the like, shit's there's a few of them. Yeah. everything. So people are like, that's not real. It can't be real. And then people are like, I was fucking at that party. <laughs> that's what happened? That's what y'all were screaming about in the room? <laughs> like, dozens of comments, over 100 likes. Like, it's just, it's blowing going. Up. Yeah, blowing yeah. up. Yeah. And, I mean, I think it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Well, I get a call from Zeke, and he wants to murder me through the phone. He's so mad at me. And I was like, dude, what about Casey? And he's like, yeah, whatever, Casey, but you bought... I was like, what? He was more mad at me. Probably just for posting the pictures, I feel like. Yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly that's what he's he mad for. But I was like, you. dude, he did it. He I just, did it. I just made sure there was evidence of it. And <laughs> the world needed to see what happened to you. You were the historian. Of yes, this. exactly. I was just sitting there watching the war go down, and you know what? I'm, uh, I'm non-biased. Oh, 
My goodness. Okay, wait. So you told me that he got back from breakfast. So that's the thing. He ran out of the apartment with shit in between his teeth. When he went to breakfast, he came back. And the shit was no longer in his teeth. Through the process of eating his breakfast... He had eaten... It sw- he swallowed all of it. All that dog poop. He swallowed it, for sure. I'm surprised he like didn't get sick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He probably threw up for the rest of the day, but he's just hung over. Oh, just hung over, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so when he got home, he was super fucking mad at Casey. And then next time I went there, <laughs> I did delete it that day. And then... Um, and then you kept it. And <laughs> well, then I reposted it like a few months later, and he didn't really notice or something. Oh my god! He probably just thought like, you know what? He's gonna do. He's gonna keep doing this. Yeah. Like, there's, there's no way for I you to do. prevent me from doing it. Exactly. Like, there, I mean, you can't. You can tell me not to come over, but then your roommate's gonna be like, "Nah, you can come, Bobby." <laughs> yeah, he was more mad at me than Casey, but that was epic. I mean, when people saw the pictures, and then any time people saw him, they would just yell at him like, oh, "Shit on your face, Charlie!" But like all this stuff. Oh, I bet that's so terrible. So these guys would just constantly go at each other. Well, so <laughs> Zeke was so fucking embarrassed and so fucking mad. I mean, everyone we knew saw those pictures. Yeah. And knew what really happened. And that it fucking happened. He <laughs> rubbed dog shit all up in his face and he swallowed it and in his own bed, in his own apartment, at his own birthday party. Oh my God. So I can't Zeke imagine. vowed to get his revenge. Yeah. And he did. He got his revenge, I want to say a year or two later. So he was like keeping this in his back pocket. He was just waiting to think of something that was Good. as bad yeah. as what he did to him. And he did. So this was either at a year or two later. So it was, And they lived together, I want to say, for like seven years. They oh, went okay. from apartment to apartment to house to house. They were roommates yeah. for a long time. They are great buddies. <laughs> Even though about the you know that story <laughs> and what I'm about to tell you. So Zeke vowed his revenge. You know, at the next apartment later, um, they're having this issue, and they, you know, both party a lot and smoke, and, you know, stoners get the munchies or whatever. So they would go out, and Zeke would always buy whatever food he was about to eat when he got home, and then he'd buy, like, a burger extra for late-night munchies. Okay. So you'd go home, eat, have that one in the fridge, and then he would come out late, late in the night, and the burger would be gone. And he'd be fucking mad, because he specifically (laughs) bought, you know, whatever it was, a fucking water burger you know awesome just the way you want it and when you're drunk you fucking want yeah, that course. and you got it you don't even have to go anywhere you have it already. you have it it's perfect it's perfect yeah it's fucking heaven so this happened time and time again that casey would go and steal it and eat it oh my and he God. would get fucking mad what a like, dick. real mad he would yeah, fucking scream well but, can you imagine like going to your fridge expecting to eat like your bomb ass water burger and it not be there especially if you're drunk or high oh you'd yeah you'd be so angry furious yeah i'd be so upset i'd cry <laughs> that happened time and time again so zeke realized this was the way to get casey back okay he knew if i put something in there and say it's mine he's gonna eat it oh my god so he came up with this idea and he didn't tell anybody until afterwards and he one night you know they know they're gonna have a party and he buys himself his water burger and an extra one. And before they go in it, this little dirty boy <laughs> goes and masturbates into the extra burger. And so it's filled with his special sauce. <gasps> so he gets home, eats his normal meal, and was like, bro. And he said this out loud because they had another roommate also. And Casey and Carlos were hanging out. Yeah. He said it out loud. Man, I was having a shitty day earlier, but it... My luck's turning around. The water burger gave me an extra water burger. And so he said it, you know, and he's like, can't wait, I'm gonna fucking eat that late tonight when I'm fucked up. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. And they're hearing this sitting in the living room. Cool. Well, Zeke goes to the, uh, goes to his room and he, he made some excuse that he was gonna stay in his room for the night. He didn't really feel like partying or whatever. Okay. I don't know what it was. And he just wanted to give Casey time to for sure eat it. Yeah. So he waits till it's way late at night, four or five, and he goes out there at 4 or 5 in the morning. He goes out there and uh, goes to the kitchen, opens the fridge, burger's gone. So he goes out, and it's literally only Casey and Carlos at the time. And I think one, another friend of ours was there too, Ryan. And he's like, hey, Casey, where the fuck is my burger? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. You know, all <laughs> drunk and all trying to play coy. And, well, I didn't fucking do it. And he's like, no, 
I know you fucking ate my burger. You always eat my burger. Carlos rats you out, their other roommate, and okay. he's like, I uh, would never do that to you, dude. Like, that's fucked up. It's yours. Yeah. You bought it. You know, if anything, I would tell you, hey, get me an extra one, I'll give you money. But exactly. I wouldn't do that to you. He knew it was not Carlos. He knew. He did it all the time. He's like, that fucking burger you ate today, I fucking jacked off in it. And he said, <laughs> he said Carlos started exploding of laughter, <laughs> like dying. And Casey's face just turned. You know, like, well, yeah. sick to your stomach and he like ran to the restroom and puked and puked he just puked ate a cum puked. burger he literally yeah ate a cum burger oh my god they always talk about doing that like in movies and like you know crazy stories yeah. he literally did it to him <gasps> and it was oh my god then he told everyone well yeah then course. he told everyone and Casey tried to say I didn't need it I didn't need it Carlos was like he fucking ate it I was sitting right next to him like yeah he ate it he ate it like he always does and I told him don't eat fucking oh, Zeke's Carlos. burger he's like I don't give a fuck he's like he ate it right next to me like he always does oh, and it was funny goodness. because they were they're still fucking best friends yeah so years down the road anytime shit would happen they would talk shit to each other and uh, and Zeke would try to talk shit to Casey he's like I've been inside of you <laughs> Like that's literally he just anytime they would yell or bitch at each other or talk shit, he that would just was say his it comeback. and it would just stop. Yeah. Like it would just shut him up and Zeke would just walk off. Well, you can't really, really you, come there's back nothing with he could say after that. after that. Oh my goodness. I feel like those are pretty even pranks. They're fucking both terrible. They're pretty up there, They're, honestly. The uh, only thing with It's super bad. The only thing with the burger is that there's no picture evidence. But yeah. that's up there. That's bad. They're both disgusting. disgusting. Yeah, these guys were, they're rowdy, prank hard, get fucked up, drink. I mean, yeah, I mean, party Typical central. college kids. Yeah. Like, everyone gets fucked up multiple nights out of the week, not just Friday and Saturday. I know in college for us, it was um, obviously Friday, Saturday, but then Tuesday started happening. It was, yeah. And then it was Wednesday and then Thursday. And then by you know, like by the time you know it, people are partying every single night of the yeah. week. I think in, in like high school, you think of partying the weekends. Yeah. And then when you're older, partying the weekends. But college, it's every fucking day, all day. All Wake up, day. drink a beer in the shower, like drink a beer with breakfast. Like it's partying. Yeah. Like it's, it gets out of control. Oh, absolutely. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe that. It's really funny because when I tell people those stories, um, those two stories in particular, um, they're shocked that they're still best friends. <laughs> they're like brothers, best men at each other's weddings kind of shit. Yeah, but I feel like <clears throat> that's not, like, it's a prank. It's a joke, he, you know? It, okay. <laughs> I've done a lot of pranks to people, but I've never done anything like biological warfare. Okay, but... If you think about it, Zeke was just getting Casey back at the end of the day, at first and foremost. Sure, yes. He was just getting him back. And two, it's like super fucked up pranks, but it's not like some things that you hear that people like stop being friends over. Those are like bad pranks, but... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you did that to Luke, for example... I would never do that to Luke. He's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking thing. Like, I would never do that. <laughs> I've done, as y'all have heard from some of our stories, some fucked up shit. <laughs> but you never do it to your friends. No, that's true. Like ever. No, now not a not a rowdy it. prank. No, mm -hmm. no harmless pranks. You'll put Nick in a boat, but you yeah, won't. that's not. A, yeah, see, <laughs> or put your car on Craigslist and shit. But like, that's. I'm not gonna put a biological thing inside of you. That's really bad. Feces is bad. Feces is feces is bad. Super bad. Well, bacteria. Could have gotten he he dog could have something. gotten really sick. Yeah, but for sure. Oh my god, he probably didn't even notice because he was throwing up anyways. Yeah, exactly. The next day, mm -hmm. I remember him that night. He was uh, throwing up rowdy in the shower, like in his tub. Oh shower. yeah, Ew. like bad, bad. Yeah. So. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. I feel like the one story that I do remember you telling me, which I'm sure we'll tell in another episode, is that you put the sh a shock collar on one of your friends. Justin, yeah. Yeah, that's like so, the worst thing that I feel like you've done to your one of your friends. And you know what? If you're drunk slash dumb enough to be talked into this, you deserve every bit of it. Because <laughs> we were we were here at the house, and at this time, I had a, a whole nother set of dogs. Um, I had, te well, Scotch was still around, or Saki, actually, but it was Tequila and okay. Stoli. Yeah. And Stoli was a really big pit bull lab. 
and we have a few acres at our house and it's mainly woods so there's not really like real fences that separate properties mm -hmm. um some of them at least well around ours we didn't have a fence yet so the way to keep our dogs around our house is we tried the shot collar idea which did not work no, because one of our dogs is a genius and she would literally like um i feel like it's a scene from jurassic park that she was testing the fence oh yeah the barriers she would walk around the perimeter and wait for the beep because it would beep before it would shock right it would go beep 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 and then if they kept going or infringing on that zone it would wait 30 seconds and then give a minor shock and mm -hmm. you could set the test so i would go real low for her stoli the big boy he needed more because i he felt was like a bigger he, guy. yeah he's just like whatever but she would go and test it she was brilliant well, he would get really drunk and fuck around with the shot collars. <laughs> and one of my buddies um, was like, how bad does it feel? I was like, it's not that bad. So I would turn it on a medium level and like let him experience it. And then he's like, well, let me put it on my nipple. So we did that to him. Okay. And he's like, ah, I screamed, blah, blah. And I still had it at mid level. And I was like, that's it, dude. I was like, you should put it on your neck. And at first he was like absolutely never going to do that. <laughs> but in within minutes, it was on him. <laughs> It was, it was a fucking on. It was on his neck. It was on his neck. <laughs> and so I had turned it all the way up, which it's not going to fucking kill you. No, it, it won't. I mean, it's going to hurt. Well, the thing is, it's a, uh, it's a perimeter shock collar. So it only goes to where you hit the barrier. Mm -hmm. So me and my buddy Kobe, we walk with him. Okay, let's go to, and his plan was to walk up to it, beep, beep, beep. Okay, and wait there. So as soon as it shocked him and it was too much for him, he could step back into the safe zone. Right. Well, as soon as it beeped, he's like, okay, it's coming in 30 seconds. We're like, one, two, three, counting, 28, 29, 30. As soon as it hit 30, Kobe, my friend, is like 6'5". He's oh, a he's big huge. fucking guy. Yeah. We shove him as hard <gasps> as we can outside the safety zone, and it starts shocking the shit out of him. <laughs> and he's like, we're all fucked up. We're all drunk, obviously. <laughs> So he's just rolling on the ground screaming, fuck, fuck you, ah, ah, and he's, <laughs> it's going on. And everyone's running over and laughing. And anytime he comes over to try to like run into the safe zone. You just push him back. It was like football drills. Like everyone lines up like linemen and pop, 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 pushes him back, pushes him <laughs> back. And he's just screaming and yelling and twitching like a crackhead. Like, oh my goodness. That was really funny. That's hilarious. It was really funny because he wanted to feel it. I was like, okay. And then I knew, like, Kobe and I are staring at each other. Like, we can convince him to do more. Oh, for sure. We can definitely take this a little bit further. Um, when I was in college, uh, my boyfriend now, friend at the time in college, he got a dog, actually. He rescued him. And this dog had major PTSD. He What's his name? G. G, that's His right. name's Lil G. Lil G. Because at the shelter, they called him Lil Gunther. Mm. So we just changed it to Lil G. Oh, okay. Because he's a G. So... Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> so this dog had major PTSD, would bark rowdy if he heard any sort of noise. Literally anything at all. And so, hello, Mimosa, little birthday girl. Literally anything at all. And he would go psycho so um my friend decided to finally get a shot collar for him just whenever he barks and stuff to try to yeah to try it out so this shot collar it went from zero to a hundred one hundred literally that's how many fucking levels levels there were. That? yes what the fuck okay mine had like five and I was very nervous as to what 100 well, felt like. Okay, well, something to say about that is G's a very small dog. Very small. He's, he's, a, mini, he's a mini pincher mix. Okay. So literally tiny. Yeah, well, they sell them by the size though and strength. Like, yeah. Stoli, like, I don't even know they make one for Clue and Uzu now. I don't think so. It'd be so. like a They're horse fucking big. thing. Yeah. Because Stoli's <laughs> was the, the biggest and he was only 120 pounds. Stoli wasn't even that big, was he? I feel like he was Stoli around was 100. He was fat, but uh, he was just big boned, a little stoly. Um, so he did. He got like the size small for a small dog, mm -hmm. and it went from zero to 100. And we obviously put it on G. Yeah. And I think we went up to like 15. I was like, that should be fine. Like, what's the issue there? And G obviously starts barking at somebody walking in the door. We press the button. And you've seen the videos, right, where you put, like, a cucumber behind a cat. Oh, and they when jump, they fly into the air. That was G. And I was like, too strong, too strong. No, <laughs> like, it's, it's so surprising to them because they think, like, 
they've been bit by something. Yeah. The tequila, the first time she went over it, she jumped straight up to it and let out a yelp. Oh, uh, And she's okay. like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, come here, tequila. And then I would go to her, and then she remembered that it beeped first, then it shocked the shit out of her. She so anytime literally she walked, was brilliant. Oh, yeah. So then, naturally, we all decide to test this shock collar and see how high our tolerance is for this shock. Yeah. And I think I went up to, like, 50, maybe. And I was like, no, this get that much? the fuck away from me. Literally, mm. it was bad. And then, obviously, we had, like, my roommates and then some of the guys over. And one guy did it all the way to 100. But, uh, like, 50 was bad for me. <laughs> and I was like, holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> I to train can't them imagine. not to do that. So, it's to them, it's so... Literally, not you know, no pun intended. Shocking. Yeah. That it's no, like, I what the it. fuck? What they don't super surprised. They can't understand what it is, and so you have to teach them. That's why they sell them with those flags. So they know. And you put the flags, flags because it's just right. a wire. They don't fucking know what that is. So exactly. you need to give them a visual something, a visual barrier to be like, ooh. Anytime I go near those white flags, I hear a beep. I know what the beep means. Exactly. Oh my land, huh? Well, that's shocking. <laughs> shocking. Yeah, you know what? Uh, with Luke, um. He, I think growing up, he was around a lot of horses a lot. And, yeah, uh, his mom, uh, I went to like their stables when I was younger. I used to ride horses. So there's like quite a few of them in the family. I think four brothers. Every single one of them has pissed on an electric fence at their, <laughs> and the older brother has always made the younger one do it. And then they, when they did it, they made the, the other younger, younger one. one. And then they all the way down to the youngest one. Oh my goodness. And I, I've, we used to have a horse electric fence. And um, where when? I think I bought it. What I don't even fuck? know where I bought it. <laughs> and what are you talking about? Yeah, we had one. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't think you ever saw it. Oh, I okay. tried to prank uh, Justin with it, the one that put the shot collar on him. <laughs> I tried to set it up like a maze in the garage and like turn it on and be like, go find something. And he's like, fuck you. Oh my God. We try to design like a little like saw like maze and it's like don't touch the wire. That is so it funny. Fucked, that one fucking hurt. I bet. And that's the same kind that uh, Luke and all them pissed on. Well, if they use it for horses, it has to. It hurt needs to a zap. Time. Yeah, a couple hundred pound or not a couple, a few hundred a pound. Few, yeah. Animal to oh well, nope. <laughs> no, thank you. They're way stronger. Oh my gosh, what does it feel like when you piss on one? Did Luke ever tell you? He said it, it really fucking hurt. It just like shocked the shit out of your whole body. Yeah. Holy but it, the point of contact is here, and it goes up, so it permeates the pain yeah. from there. Yeah, all of them did it. Oh, my land. Huh? It was really fucking funny. I thought. I remember when he told me that, and he's like, don't fucking touch it. I went in, and he's like, do you want to? I was like, sure, and I did it back, and he was like, holy <laughs> shit, that fucking, that's no joke. He's like, dude, we made, he's like, my older brother made me pee on it. I made the, the next one, and then the next one. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, that's fucking Jesus funny. Jesus Christ. So, I bet you guys are wondering, um... About the six foot monkey we have behind us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bananas? Bananas, our friend. So, my brother, um, we have two of them. Yes. Bananas. Of the giant gorillas? Yes. Bananas has a brother. And my brother got very, very good at carnival games one summer. <laughs> one carnival game. One carnival game. Just one. So, one time, yeah. One time we went to a carnival, and I think it was with my ex girlfriend, uh, either Lauren or Kelly. But. I went and I literally fucking Googled. I wanted a big ass animal, you yeah. know, big ass stuffed animal. And I was like, they're always so funny. And like, I have a lot of like a black light stuff in my game room. So like, it'll look cool in there. Right. And so I literally Googled which one of the ones, you know, how to, how to cheat, not cheat, but like how to really win. How to win. Because they're all rigged they're all in rigged. certain ways that are very difficult to win. Right. They are all winnable, but they're really fucking hard to do. So I narrowed it down to like three that they taught me how to, how to do. And... The one in particular, I just picked it up so fast. It's the one that there's a, a glass beer bottle laying down on its side. Okay. They give you a stick that has a rope attached to it, and at the end of the rope, it's a plastic ring that's tied to it. The yeah. same rings that you throw to try to get on bottlenecks. Okay. Same ring. Got it. So what you have to do is you have to stand there, lean over the rail, put the ring over the bottleneck, and then you have to lift it up in a certain way to then make the beer bottle stand upright, and okay. it cannot fall over. It's fucking hard. To it do. sounds hard. It is fucking hard, <laughs> and it's whatever. It's one try, one win. You know, three or five dollars. I think it's like typically two or three bucks. Um, three dollars a try, and if you win, you get. And it's the biggest animals in the whole carnival. 
it's one of the big games where they're all not just kind of little ones, two, three footers. They're all like five, six foot animals. Yeah, massive. And so I was like, all right, I can do that. I probably put 20 bucks into it and then I got it. And the first <laughs> time I did it, I was like, oh, and it's a very specific way that you have to move. And the way that the game's designed and you look at it, it seems counterintuitive to move and do it like that. Okay. But it works. Right. And so I got good at it. I did it once and I was like, oh shit. And they're like, okay, you can't play here again. I was like, what? No, you can't win here again. You These can only get one big. Add booth. So every carnival, they usually have two of every big game. Okay. So I would go to one, win it, and then go to the other one and, and leave that prize there with my girlfriend so they didn't see me walking up with one. Yeah. Go. And then I got so good that uh, typically I'd go into a carnival, we'd hang out, and then when I was ready to leave, I'd go win go and then one or two tries and then win again and be like peace <laughs> i'd fucking leave with monster stuffed animals like that one if you're watching on youtube you guys should see our media room we got rid of a, a lot of them yes but there used to be like 20 or 30 massive five foot stuffed animals in the massive media room. stuffed animals we have in it's there. A, a dual level there's two couches in there two rows and so the back row was filled <laughs> with animals but so i got it because it was fun to do uh, if we were going to Carnival anyways, I'd call up my cousin and see if he wanted to bring any of his kids. And it was just funny as fuck because they're huge. They're so They're hilarious massive. to look at. Yeah, if you're watching, this thing is just absolutely hilarious. It's like multicolored, super bright. Oh, for sure, yeah. It's so He's funny. a wild-looking uh, stuffed animal. Yeah. And so I won a whole bunch of them. Then I started selling. I'd put it on Craigslist for like 20, 30 bucks because it, I was like, if your kid wants a giant fucking stuffed animal, it's never been there touched, never go. been used, brand new, fucking, yeah. there you go. And um, a few times, <laughs> to actually, the carnival, I would get, people would ask me to uh, either, I would sell the one I had with me, because mm -hmm. I would get two cool fucking, uh, two of them that look cool, and then on my way out, if someone asked me, I would, if I didn't want to keep it, I would sell it to them for like 20, 30 bucks. I only spent three or six dollars. It would Dope. take me one or two tries. Yeah. Or I'd be like, well, I can't, but... Sometimes someone would stop me. I'd be holding a giant one, and they'd be like, "What a, how'd you win that?" Blah blah. I'm like, "Oh, the game is really easy. I can do it." And they're like, "Really?" And I'd be like, "If you give me twenty five dollars, tell me which one you want." And so they'd give me the money, and I'd walk up, win it, but then I'd done at that game, and then I'd leave. Yeah. So I sold a few of them. I gave the majority of them away to uh, a lot of our cousins, our young yeah, we cousins, have young cousins. A lot of them. So every time they come up to visit us, I'd be like. Whatever you can fit in your car, take one. And their parents are like, are you fucking kidding me? This thing's <laughs> fucking you. Did you know I almost couldn't bring him home? Yeah, because you couldn't fit him in your Mustang. I had a Mustang at the time, and I tried so hard for, I want to say 30, 45 minutes to fit him in that without breaking something. Oh, my He's God. He's so yeah, large. because they're dense, too. It's not They're not like, squishy. No, no not yeah. squishy at all. Like, you can move, like, his arms and stuff like that. Like, they're dense, stuffed yeah. animals. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine though, like driving and seeing somebody with that I used to have a picture, or I think when I, at uh, Corny Ball yeah. in Holotus, I think after I went to the bar I used to work at, and someone took a picture of him outside because it's like he's like flowing, like popping out of the car. <laughs> his, one of his arms was hanging out of the car, like halfway out of the car, and then it's like all smushed up yeah. in the window, and it's huge. It looks like the car exploded with something. I bet. Oh my God. That's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I remember when we went to, it was in the Mercedes. Um, when we went to the carnival at the at t Center, it was really fucking hard oh. to put them in there. Like super, <laughs> super hard. My girlfriend was so pissed. We, Cause she barely had any room in there. Oh my gosh. Um, so I'm sure, so we always have like some fun guests sometimes. And I'm sure you guys noticed in episode three, our drug tank episode was that episode three yes okay so episode three we had uh three interesting men behind us oh the most interesting men from dos Equis. from dos Equis, yep. yeah you know those cardboard cutouts like at bars or promotional or in gas stations you see them yeah also that was not episode three episode four, four. but continue yeah. so i started collecting them <laughs> and i got my first one with uh my best friend that she actually moved all uh long time ago but she moved to west virginia i believe did she really no 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 one of the carolinas oh okay don't remember which one got it so her and i would get into trouble and we worked at the same restaurant at the time so we'd get off of work and go get fucked up all the time mm -hmm. well at the restaurant i worked at the one that was actually haunted in the same parking lot was the pool hall the bar 
and every single person from work would get off of work and we'd all meet at the bar. Mm -hmm. It's right there. That was our bar. Same parking lot. We didn't even have to leave. Yeah. It was it. So we spent a lot of fucking time there. Everyone in there. We knew all the bartenders, all the managers, all the cocktail waitresses, everything. Well, we were in there and one night I catch I catch uh, a glimpse of the most interesting man in the world. And I just like if you're watching at home you can see we have a you know a decent bar and it looks pretty unique so I wanted one for home. And I asked the bartender, it was a good buddy of mine, and he's like, no, bro, you can't have that. That's actually promised to the uh, AGM or the assistant manager or something. Okay. And I was like, come on, dude. And he's like, dude, it's his. He already called it when it came in. He, like, told us. I was like, well, just go ask him. And he's like, I'll go ask him, but he's going to say no. So he went and asked him. Came back. He's like, he says no, dude. You cannot have it. I was like, all right, fine. Well, I'm with my friend Drea, and we're getting drunk and getting fucked up. And I tell her, and she's like, you really want it? I was like, yeah. And she goes, all right, fuck that. We're going to take it. So I was like, okay. So we walk inside and it is not close. The cardboard cutout is not close to the exit. <laughs> not close to the door at all. Not fucking close. And that pool hall is very big. Super big. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They, that said, is, are really fucking big. I was going to say, this is one of the places where they have every single fight you can think of. Like they are. UFC, boxing. UFC, yeah. everything. And they are packed to the max. Yeah. I think they, the one that we used to go to had like 24, 25 pool tables. Yeah. It, That's it a lot. Huge. I mean, it's big. And it was nowhere near the door. So we <laughs> went up there. We both paid our tab. We were trying to act inconspicuous. And she just grabs it. And she's like, go, go, go. <gasps> so we just fucking run out the door. And they're yelling at us from behind the bar to stop. You know, like, stop, stop, Bobby, Jay, fucking stop that. They know us. They we, know we're, you guys. We're there every single day. So we fucking jump in my car and take off, and we're laughing, ha ha. Get here, put it up. We love it. Take pictures with it. Post it on Facebook. Oh my god. Well, so we go to work, and my manager pulls me aside. He's like, <laughs> "What did you do at Fast Eddie's last night?" And I was like, "I took the most interesting man cut out." He's like, "Why?" And I was like, "They told me I couldn't have it." And he's and like, "So you fucking it. stole it?" I was like, "Yes, I did." I want. And he's it. like, "Dude, they banned you from the bar." And I was like, "What?" And he's like, they banned you from the bar. They fucking blacklisted you. Yeah, and they do that. Bars do that a lot. If you're rude yeah. to them, if you're drunk, you cause a scene. They can ban you for permanently or for however long they want. Right. So my manager is like, let me talk to him. And I was like, I was like, for real, dude, I can't even go in that bar. I, everyone goes there. Like, we all hang out there. Like, what the fuck? This what sucks. What if you gave it back? So he went and spoke to the manager, and he came back to me. He's like, so we have a deal. They said, if you bring him back... Um, you can you can go in the bar. If uh, if not, he's like you're banned for six months. <gasps> I was like, for real, dude. And Drea was with me because they pulled her into the office <laughs> with me. She's like, who you know who has it? I was like, I fucking have it. It's at my house. And he literally told them uh, to tell or told our manager to tell us that we have to bring him back or we're both banned for six months. We're like half a year. And he's like, yeah. I was like, you tell him fucking see him in six months oh my god <laughs> i fucking wanted it he's mine he's here so you didn't go to fast eddies for six yeah, months yeah we went to uh, boston up. pub yeah oh okay but everybody was going there we had to we were like convincing people to come to the other bar because we were banned there yeah and everyone was like just give it back i was like no no i want no. it no and he's at my house <laughs> i post pictures with him all the time and like be on i'd post it on their facebook like with the most oh, interesting man my God. and then in six months i came back in and they're like you fucking really <laughs> you for that asshole. Car cut? i was like yeah and they're like all right dude like cool like <laughs> i can't believe you fucking did that you're stubborn that started oh, for sure that started my known. collection of most interesting men in the world now yeah. last night we had three up here one yeah in, we uh, had three of them black tuxedo white tuxedo and a surfer and a surfer in a scuba a scuba in diving, a wetsuit you know wetsuit yeah yeah Where'd you get the other two? Another one was stolen from a bar. And then <laughs> at that point, uh, mom knew we had a collection. Mm -hmm. So uh, she finangled one from a restaurant one time. What? She actually, <laughs> it was when, when my ex-girlfriend was in the hospital. Oh, yeah. She went, they were eating at a restaurant and they saw one and they asked for it and they told her no. And she said, my son's girlfriend is in the hospital. It would really make her happy. And they gave it to her. <clears throat> so that's how we got the other one. Oh my goodness gracious. It was, I mean, that was all true. She was in the hospital. So whenever... And we did a collection of yeah, most interesting men. Whenever his ex-girlfriend was in the hospital, I have the picture. Um, we put them all up. There's three of them. Yeah, there's three of them. And she's like posing with them in her hospital again in her hospital and everything. Again, yeah. But oh my goodness. That's actually hilarious. Yeah. 
That's I mean, so fun. Was, I can't it, believe you actually didn't go to Fast Eddie's. Well, it was really times. funny because at first we're like, we're, we can't do this. This is our bar. Mm-hmm. And then the thing is, like, wait, we're both banned? Well, we're best friends. Like, Yeah, we'll go somewhere We'll go to some together. other bar. Fuck everyone else. And we'll bring some people. We'll pull them away from Fast Eddie's, which we did. Yeah. Okay, so we had a lot of fun with Drea. Anytime her and I went out, we definitely got into trouble. We uh, mixed it up and did some pretty random things, like you just heard, stealing the uh, most interesting man cutouts. But uh, the thing about Drea is, Drea's a lesbian, and she's a very pretty Argentinian girl. Yes, super very strong charming, accent. Very heavy accent. Well, down here in San Antonio, for y'all, for y'all, for those of y'all, sorry, for those of y'all that don't know, um, we bleed silver and black, the San Antonio Spurs. Mm-hmm. And one of the legends on the team that just recently retired in the past few years is Manu Ginobili. And Manu comes straight from Argentina. Yeah, you can barely understand what he's saying. Yeah, when he first got here, people didn't know who he was, what he was about. Turned out to be phenomenal for the organization in our city. But, um, yeah, so Drea took advantage of that. (laughs) I would go out with Drea all the time, and we'd go down to the lesbian bars, and she would pick up so many girls. Really? Biggest player I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Better than any guy, any other lesbian I've ever seen. She picked up beautiful women all the time. Yeah. And half of the time, it's because she would tell them that she was Manu Ginobili's cousin. And since he's been in the NBA, he's bringing over some of his family. Oh, my God. And she was charming, beautiful. Yeah. Really fun. And then with that heavy Argentinian accent, I mean, they believed it. It was hilarious. It was so funny. It was so funny. She would take home girl after girl after girl, and it just. I, it cracked me up every single time. Oh, my God. These poor girls probably thought they were going to meet Manu. Oh, for sure they did. <laughs> oh, for sure they did. Or when they see him on the you know TV, oh, I bought, bought made out with his cousin. You're like, yeah. Mm, what cousin? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He doesn't have a cousin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Drea is such a fun time. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and I cannot believe that. That's actually hilarious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean... A little bit of a crazy episode, but we went back to some of our devious moments and yep. uh, adventures. We're back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to episode six. It has been a blast. Please go watch us on YouTube, listen on iTunes, subscribe, subscribe, and follow us on any social media for at effing priceless. Thank you guys so much. Huge shout out to our bands once again. Of course, our intro band is Saltwater Slide. Amazing local guys. They do reggae, real chill vibes, good, uplifting music. And uh, they're just a good group. They're all uh, very environmentally conscious, and they do beach cleanups and promote stuff like that. And uh, their music's just really good. It always puts me in a good mood. Yeah, super dope band. And we can't forget our outro music, Love Killed the Hero. Wally. Wally is their lead singer. Shout out to them and their song, So Damn Nice. Be sure to go like their NPR Tiny Dust submission video. Thank you guys so much again. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. See you guys. It's getting late. My body.